Well, Tina and I took out the Bebop today down to the beach. There's some room to fly down here and maybe we'll see something. Some deers or bears or elk. Sometimes they're over on the flats over there, but I don't know. Maybe not this time of year. Too early in the year. The grass starts getting greener. Well, I like flying this with the virtual reality goggles. I have to put my iPhone inside the goggles and plug in the wire to the controller. And I gotta configure everything and join everything up. And I, I think I did it a bit wrong. Okay, now I gotta calibrate the darn Bebop. And I gotta take it away from the truck apparently when I'm doing it because the big metal objects maybe throw everything off. So, uh, we'll just put it in a piece of dirt there and do the configuration, calibration. And, um, anything with GPS or compass, you have to do this. And I'm, I'm thinking I should have did it with the controller too, but I didn't. And, uh, I might have hooked this up all wrong. Um... I'm thinking I might have uh, joined the Bebop to my iPhone instead of the controller to my iPhone because uh, when I got uh, quite a ways away, it, it I lost signal from the Bebop and it, it didn't respond properly to the controls, to the joysticks when I gave it commands. It just wasn't acting according to Hoyle. So I'm thinking... I just had it set up wrong in the first place. But we got a little fight, flight in and, uh, you know, you learn as you go. Um, so, yeah, okay. We'll buzz off and have a look around. Okay, you can see the difference in the cameras right away. The one on the right is from the Bebop, you can tell that. And the one on the left is from my little Sony camera. And I always loved the video or the video or the pictures or whatever came out of that little Sony camera. It's a really nice camera. It even takes pictures underwater. But um, I don't know, the Bebop is like much brighter. Really pulls in the light. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a small lens, and you can't expect too much out of a little small lens. But it looks pretty clear to me. It's good enough for what I need. And then uh, when I do my editing, I do all this editing on my iPad. And, um, and then I just save it at the smallest so people can upload it quick. Now there's the old defunct pulp mill. We had a pulp mill working in Gold River and for a while there was a paper mill too, but it's all decommissioned now. And you can see a ship over there at the deep sea dock and that ship loads raw logs and they're sold to China and Korea and who knows where else. And that's where the company can make the most money to uh, ship the logs to the mills well, there's the shipping cost and everything and and a lot of the buyers are more finicky about buying lumber they rather buy their raw logs and make their own lumber and uh, okay we do have a little mill right here though that's a little shingle mill so uh, yellow cedar and uh, red cedar go to that shingle mill now this is the dry land sort where the logging trucks dump their wood and, and we also bring wood out of the salt chuck that comes from other camps and sort through it. Look at this great big ugly puddle here. I didn't even know it was there. It might be just from uh, runoff from the snow melt and we had a couple big rainstorms too. Maybe filled it in. It takes a while to seep away. But it's uh, quite a pond. Be great if it froze. Be nice skating pond. Okay, here comes the logging truck with a load in here highway trucks and this is all second growth wood this small stuff so these guys will 
pull the load off of there and spread it out like that other wood there and then they go through it and separate it into categories and lengths and, and that'll tell which market to send it to. So now we'll go for a little look around. There's uh, sometimes you see bear and elk and deer over there, but uh, there's nobody home today. So we'll go up the estuary a little ways and have a look at the other little place and see. Sometimes you see deer and elk and bear all grazing there at the same time, happily ever after. Yeah, a salmon go up this river and same with steelhead. Probably other things go up that river too. Even the tide goes up that river a bit. Yeah, looks pretty good. I like making videos with the bebop. It's pretty nice to have something that I can get a better vantage point. You know, you can only do so much with the video. Sometimes you can put the camera on a selfie stick and hold it way up in the air, but this is awesome when you can get up like this. Put a little video together, you know, you can take some video and then turn it into a story. That's what I like doing. It doesn't take much to make a story. You can make a story out of anything. So now we're going to take another little cruise over top the road here and have a look at this other little patch of ground. Try to miss all the trees. Have another look at that old pulp mill. Now there's going to be an announcement someday and they'll make it into something else. Make power. Oh, there's some tall popular trees. I better make some evasive, evasive maneuvers to get around them. You don't want to hit a big tall tree. Horrible to be stuck up there. So now, there, and that's the head of Mushlet Inlet. That's where the tallest mountains on Vancouver Island are up at the head there. And now, the, the holiday days. 